Hey guys, it's Ralph with Stray Benzes. In today's episode, got something for you about the air conditioning system. And this is true for any of them, the 123, 124, 126, and even 201. Mercedes Benz, the uh, baby Benz, the uh, 123 was the, or is most likely the best Benz ever built. The 124 in the, of the uh, uh, mid 80s, uh, early 90s. And of course, the S Class, the 126, that's right behind me here, yeah, 420. So I go through all the different main components of the uh, car, and then I'll uh, also in another episode, I'll go over the common, most common issues with them. Here we go. First of all, how does a, a AC system actually work? What are some of the bare bone basic principles? It's like a fridge, your AC at home, in the car, anywhere. You take a gas like Freon that you compress and heat develops as you're doing the compression. And then you turn it into a liquid that then you can easily convey throughout your system. And then through a uh, evaporator, you actually start bleeding the gas into this uh, evaporator for the gas to expand and what happens anyone who's familiar with compressed air and you hold your hand long enough in front of a compressed air nozzle you will see how cold it gets just because the expansion of the air causes uh, for the the uh, heat to be taken out of the surrounding air and this effect is accentuated by the gas that you use because air is doesn't work as well that's why you pick a gas like one of the freons that we use because it has completely different properties and it gets much colder and it's thus much more effective in a such a system and because it's not air you want to capture that gas and you want to continuously keep it in that loop because it's not very environmentally friendly nor is it healthy so coming out of the evaporator and that is the one where we have uh, that we is located in the cabin you blow the cabin air through it and you cool it down with it but what do you do with the gas it comes back into the compressor as gas the gas is compressible you do you compress it back again to a higher pressure and as you build up high compression you can actually condense it and that is done through a condenser and you the cycle can start from scratch sounds really simple but it does have complications here and there. So let's start with the uh, compressor. Here it's located down there. Here there's the electric clutch that engages when the uh, climate controller needs more cold um, air in the room. Compressor starts to compress. It comes out of the line back here and puts it down into the line way down below there. And now that I've got the gas compressed, I can liquefy it and I do that in the, in the so-called condenser. This is this, this black part here with the loops here. That's all part of the uh, main condenser. And that is really also why you have the aux fan because this condenser only works well if you have cooler air going across it so this whole front here in front of the actual radiator is your condenser from it from the condenser that where the gas starts to liquefy it goes in huge loops back and forth here it comes through this fitting here into my high compression uh, measuring, measuring port. This is where I connect my gauges for the high pressure side. Once it comes out of there, that hose is connected here to the uh, uh, pressure sensing switch because there's a minimum pressure that the system must have in order for the compressor to be allowed to come on. And here's also a temperature switch because if 
my ambient temperature is getting too warm or there's something functioning as of a certain uh, maximum temperature of the gas here, two things are going to happen. A, it kicks on the uh, AUX fan and also the high speed AUX fan, meaning into high uh, speed mode because there are two modes on there, especially on the later models. And from then on, uh, I actually also um, am engaging the uh, cutout. And if the engine is in high speed and there's too much temperature, it will let the uh, it will actually disengage the uh, compressor clutch if it's getting too warm, and I need my power going to the engine. Anyhow, the uh, dryer. This is a dryer with. Uh, a drying agent in here that is there to uh, get whatever moisture is there in the system down to an absolute minimum and then I go with this blue hose to the interior of the car and then there's what is called a expansion valve that's this thing right here that's under the dash right before the evaporator and the evaporator I cannot show you because it's deep down in the middle of the center console in there. But that is where the the main uh, fan, the cabin fan, blows the warmer air across the uh, evaporator. It cools down the air. That is the cooling effect of your A system that you actually get to feel and enjoy. And once the evaporator is done, the uh, gas comes back out here into the uh, gas cooler what that doesn't mean this is only on the gas engine models the there is still the gas is still cool enough to get you some cooling effect of the gas which means the gas coming from your gas tank uh, before it goes into your fuel injection system gets cooled down by this so in the summer when it's really hot and you um, run the, the the potential danger vapor locked that's now not going to happen or the facts is, are going to be reduced by you cooling down the gas just before it goes to the uh, fuel injection it comes out here and then with this hose loops straight back to the compressor where the cycle begins from scratch so far so good this is a unit that was converted to R134 and that is another video that I did, how to do that, how, what to look out for, and so on and so forth, that is right there. One component I forgot, that's this port here. This is the low pressure port. This got converted all to the 134 hardware, so you can connect today's gauges and the filler. And that is the main loop explained and all the main components explained. All right, folks, I hope you enjoyed another episode. Give me a thumbs up, uh, subscribe, share freely with other folks who are uh, DIYing, do it yourselfer, who are avid do it yourselfers. Give me a couple of comments what to cover next. And I do intend to also cover the most common issues with the ACES, AC system. Let it be the R12 or 134. Talk to you and good luck.